Un saludo a la distancia. Hello, how are you? Greetings. I hope everything, everyone's doing fine. And welcome to our program today. On behalf of Badminton Pan America, we welcome you to our Coach Corner program. My name is Adrián Gómez, and I am pleased to be your moderator in this session. Today, we have the pleasure of having one of the most prominent coaches of the Panam region. I'm talking about coach Marco Vasconcelos, who will tell us about a topic that has been controversial when looking at the expectations of our coaches. And the topic is transitioning to high performance in badminton. A very interesting topic that gives us the option to take the next step. Before I leave you with our guest, I would like to summarize a little bit about our guest's career. He was born in Portugal. One of his achievements is to having reached top 35 in the world ranking. He's participated in the Olympic Games as an athlete in Sydney 2000, Athens 2004, and Beijing 2008. He's the Brazilian coach and since 2012, and he participated in the Games in Rio 2016, and in the Pan Games in Toronto 2015, he won two silver medals and a bronze medal. More recently, in 2019, he won a gold medal and three bronze medal in Panam Games. Before I leave you with our guest, I would like to mention some rules we'll have in the session. Please, if you have any questions or comments, we invite you to write them down in the chat box, which is located on the right side of your screens. Questions will be answered at the end of the session. We recommend the use of headphones in order to have a better quality sound. And for our English speaking community, please find a simultaneous translation option at the bottom of your screens. Without further ado, let's welcome Marco Vasconcelos. Good afternoon, Marco. Welcome to our program. Thank you for sharing with our audience and welcoming us to your home in Sao Paulo. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. First of all, can you hear me well? Perfectly. There is actually a storm right now. It's quite rainy now. I don't know if the internet will be affected, but let's try to have a really nice talk. So first of all, I would like to thank Pan Am for the invite. It's a pleasure to talk a little bit about my experience in my work here in Brazil, and I uh, hope I can help everyone, all coaches, and to share uh, topics about the sport that we love so much. I would also like to thank the Brazilian Badminton Confederation where I work, uh, who ha which has uh, led me to this talk because I needed to have an authorization, and they always want badminton in America to uh, develop, and that's why I am really thankful for that. So let's start with the talk. Transitioning to high performance in badminton. 
So you have already mentioned some things about my C my resume. I am Marco de Vasconcelos and I am 48 years old. I was born in Mar in the island of Porto Madera in Portugal. It's a very small island where Cristiano Ronaldo was born and I began uh, playing badminton when I was six years old and today I'm 48 now so I have a whole life in badminton so since I was a kid I had a dream to go to an Olympics game so since I had a, a lot of there were a lot of drug uh, issues in my family my, my, my with my relatives so I thought that sports could give me something I could get something from sports so I started working on my goals in 2004 2008 and 2008 so I'm a really uh, happy person as a player and I know I can be better as a coach but I'm really happy with what I've done so I attended three different uh, Olympic games as a player am I going too fast or is it fine Excellent. Excellent. I don't want to go too fast for the translation. Fine. Okay, let's move on. So, how did I get to Brazil? In two, 2008, I finished the uh, Olympic Games in Beijing, and then I went back to the island to start my coach career. Actually, I started the Level 1 course in the year 2000, the Level 2 course in 2004, those were the courses that we had in Europe. And in 2010, I attended the level three course. So uh, someone called me from Brazil because there was a player who wanted to train in Madeira. His name was Daniel Paiola. In the very beginning, I didn't want to do that because he was 17 years old, he was too young, and it's a lot of responsibility for me because this was a foreign kid. So I thought a lot about it, but they told me his life story and his dream of going to the Olympics. And that's when I accepted. And he stayed with me for a year. And throughout the year, he had really good results, really good ones for the level that he had. And in the year 2012, I was invited to come to Brazil for 40 days and it was an experience to uh, train the team that was going to play the Panam Games in 2012 in Lima for singles and teams. So I came to Br to Brazil for 40 days. I had a very good experience uh, meeting the players and I was invited again in November for the South American Games also in Lima in November. So after these two experiences, and the work that we that we did in 40 days, which actually was not my job only, the Brazilian coaches uh, did this as well because I did no miracles there in 40 days. So the Brazilian Federation invited me in December to become the coach of the senior of the Brazilian senior team, and I came then for 20 in the year 2013. So that's pretty much the story of Marco in Brazil. I was supposed to uh, go for just a semester, but then I stayed too. So because of the empathy and the work and, and the language and the communication, because they speak Portuguese, all of this helped me a lot to stay. So I was learning how to uh, be a coach. I'm still learning. I want to learn more. I want to have a better, more influence as a coach. I have goals uh, uh, in my professional career. I know there's still a lot to go, but this is the story of, Braz of Marco in Brazil. So let's move on. So this is the introduction. This is how we set goals and objectives. We have this training schedule. We have the training, control, and analysis. I'm sorry. Can you please turn up your volume? Because there are some people who are saying that they, they cannot hear you well. OK, one second. It's just that. Here, because of the quarantine, because of the lockdown, internet is not so good because there are millions of people uh, in the internet as in any other country. 
But how about this? Can you hear me better? Yes, totally. Excellent. Okay. Okay, tell me what you want. No problem. I'm here to serve you. So this is the performance control and, tr and analysis, training control and, and analysis, the results of y la determinación de objetivos y metas y programación del entrenamiento. Este es lo más importante, fue el ciclo. El ciclo que lo ha hecho, estamos hablando de 2013, 2016. Ya, este fue que quisimos. No estoy hablando que, que ha hecho de, desde 2016 hasta ahora. Entonces, yo, yo so, cuando llegué a Brasil, yo miré que eh, cuando empezamos el proceso de evaluación de la situación de Brasil, había áreas que, que era urgente tener un plan. Entonces, teníamos que comenzar por la base. Y la base era hacer la evaluación. Entonces, en 2013, evaluamos las siguientes áreas. La capacidad cardiovascular, VO2 máximo, antropometría, flexibilidad. Fuerza, resistencia a la fuerza, postura, coordinación motora y movimiento de la cancha. Y aquí tenemos una pantalla, se dice, o planilla de un de los jugadores que teníamos, que tiene un gráfico, teníamos los objetivos y la, la prueba como estaba él en el día que hicimos el examen. Todos los atletas hicieron todos los, los, los exámenes y para cada uno específico tuvimos que montar una planilla para mostrar y hablar sobre cuánto tenía que perder de gordura, masa adiposa, no sé si así se habla en español, pero a ver si es. Entonces, para perder la gordura, cuánto tenía que ganar de masa muscular y entonces trabajábamos sobre estos parámetros. Estos so parámetros que, que ha buscado en artículos, artículos que, que teníamos por eh, Europa, nominadamente en, en Dinamarca. Entonces, esto era el primer paso que teníamos que dar. También en área técnica, empezamos con técnicas de golpes. En todas las áreas de la cancha, con atleta en movimiento, sin presión, con presión, áreas de impacto, agajes, técnicas de golpe y golpes netos, las fincas. Las tácticas, hicimos muchas secuencias tácticas de ataque, defensa, ir de defensa para ataque, de ataque para defensa, elegir el golpe en una posición favorable, elegir el golpe en presión. Attacking o sea, defending, yo quería tener dados muy concretos como estaba I mean, el grupo, que sabían los jugadores. Entonces, monté of the las planillas. Of the, of the ¿Me escuchan bien? So, Dígame si me estamos escuchando bien. Ya, ya. Entonces, yo quería tener yes, una completely. noción de cómo estaba el grupo. So, Todo este proceso... The, fue un proceso que no, no ha sido so um, corto, fue longo. Fue un proceso short, que ha llevado dos años. Después de hacer los exámenes, fue dos años que este proceso doing, se, para entrar en un entrenamiento de calidad. Years, Hablamos de calidad. Por eso, yo quería saber training. cómo estaba. Y ha, y ha hecho unas planillas de, también para que yo tuviese el control de well, lo que estaba so haciendo, que es muy importante. Doing, Entonces, was, aquí really ya no... En una altura en que ya, so here, ya teníamos hecho, hecho algunos exámenes, empezamos con entrenamientos también. Exams, Entonces, so el proceso de evaluación, well. comportamiento, so descanso, comida, um, rest, comportamiento meals, extra judicial, extra colegas, judicial, compromiso, behavior, dedicación, behavior, actitud uh, y la motivación uh, intrínseca. Eso es muy, muy importante para nosotros, entrenadores, la motivación intrínseca. Coaches. Entonces, esta planilla me da... So algún, alguna noción y también control sobre el trabajo que estábamos haciendo. Esta planilla we fue hecha por un coordinador técnico que estaba trabajando conmigo y aprendí mucho con él, profesor Juan Quiminazo, la verdad, doctor, profesor Juan Quiminazo. Entonces, me pasó mucha información con esta planilla. Porque aquí well, me daba el dado cuánto entrenaba un jugador por mes en términos de minutos, los campeonatos donde iba, 
nacionales, internacionales, médico, 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 departamento médico, médico uh, si los entrenamientos eran de pesas, si era técnico, si era trenos preventivos, eh, cuando tiene una lesión, uh, crioterapia, que un entrenamiento de recuperación, entonces total de, de campeonatos, Uh, tiempo total, eh, departamento total médico, time, es una planilla time, que la verdad me daba indicadores de cómo estaba three, cada uno individual, entonces muy importante mi trabajo ahí, so um, really todo el proceso work. que lo ha hecho fue de una base, fui aprendiendo poco a poco y montando mi planilla, pero también ha tenido un grupo muy bueno conmigo, ha tenido un preparador físico, un coordinador técnico, tenía dos fisioterapeutas, tenía dos psicólogos, un médico, entonces tenía toda una estructura muy buena, muy buena para hacer todo lo que lo quería yo. Entonces, esta planilla me ha dado mucha información importante. Aquí teníamos, porque cuando empecé Here, con la planilla con números, well, con números, ahí comencé numbers, a tener algunos problemas que los atletas I no tenían noción de los números de gráficos. Entonces, yo miré, había un entrenador muy famoso de rugby so, que cuando tenía algunos jugadores que no entendían muy coach, bueno las, los who, gráficos, empezó a hacer con colores. Y las colores... Uh, they, es como tratar como graphs, niños, perdón graphs, la expresión, por aquí yo tuve que comenzar por bajo. Showing uh, results uh, with colors, colors like playing with kids, so to speak. Algo y un que lo Entonces, so this change uh, made it more understandable for players. La clasificación de, de lo We began esta planilla por día. Well, doing this classification with this template with the, with the, with the training every day and I had like 12 principal. players in, this, sea, in the main team. Diaria, una so, Diaria. I had Entonces, to fill out a template every day. When we started uh, uh, playing in competitions, then por ejemplo, I also did this classification. For example, if there was a player who had otro, ¿eh? Pero uh, an easier match in comparison to another one, but he lost si because of ba a bad attitude, because he played badly, but he actually was actually classified, he actually got a medal, so he classified, but he's not really good. Y claro, lo uh, at the end of the day. So this template gave me a lot of information about si how these players are doing in training. So according to this uh, template, you can see in no the training calidad. in 2013 Pero and 2014, things would go up and down, up and down. Up and down. So there was no quality. So yeah, during championship, it was a surprise that things were going well for certain players. But during training, quality, two days were good, two days were bad except for some with one or two yeah. players. Ah. Marco, can you please yeah. turn it up a little bit? Perdón, Thank you. no me voy a mirar, pero también no soy I'm bonito, soy feo. Entonces, seguimos. Vamos. I'm going, Vamos. you're going to have to look Aquí teníamos at me. una evaluación que fue una de las primeras que hablé. Que yeah, ellos no okay. entendió el gráfico en números. So, y el número siempre tenía que cambiarlo. Por ejemplo, esta aquí el máximo era 6. Y un más 6. Yeah. Un mal, dos, dos más o menos, tres bueno, cuatro. Un poquito arriba. Bad, cinco, two, a bit better, ya está three, bien. Y okay, seis, excelente. Four, okay, tenía five, seis, okay, pero el mes siguiente tenía que subir a siete. So a ocho, month, a nueve, a diez. Para ver, seven, eight, subir la motivación nine, de los jugadores. Ten. Para que no sienten que se so quedaron I, ahí en I la posición to, seis. Um, y también, the, cuando estaba en la posición uno, so dos, tres, lo mostrábamos los gráficos donde estaba la evolución. Y aquí ya, por mes, contaba las planillas que ya mostrado antes, de diarias, la hacía la media, y lo colocaba aquí. Entonces, tenía una noción donde estaban ellos por mes. ¿Entiendes? Y aquí en esta planilla, perdón. Sorry. Yeah, 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 it's very interesting, all of this template thing. I think that it's a very good contribution. It would be interesting to have those templates so we can share them sí. with our audience. I have a question here. Maybe you can check out your internet connection in terms of the language because I think that you are in the English channel. Can you go to the Spanish channel instead? Just to check. Parte inferior donde dice 
on the lower part of your screen where it says interpretation. Okay. I said before, now you can't see it. What's this participants or more? The thing is that you are sharing, but if not, okay, never mind. We can carry on and later on during the quiz, we'll try to fix that. Yeah, de acuerdo. Yeah, de acuerdo. Okay. Okay. Perdón, es que no consigo mirarlo acá porque sorry, como estoy compartiendo, creo que ya está en otro, screen, otro lugar. A ver, a, a ver si aquí. Let me see. Perdón, Don't worry about perdón. It, Marco. Pero, I'm sorry. ¿cómo estoy I'm escuchando sorry. las personas? ¿En español well, o en inglés? How is everyone listening? I mean, are you they listening in English or Spanish? No, well, there's yeah. a problem that we just noticed, but don't worry, we can fix it uh, during the quest. All right, so please carry on with yeah. your presentation because it's actually really interesting. Okay. I'm taking notes here. All right. Entonces, proceso de evaluación, plan de estudios, so, resultados nacionales e internacionales, process, regionales, plan, estatales, pasantías de otros países. No sé, yo necesitaba de tener informaciones para cuando uh, iba, um, no sé cómo se dice español, pero quería recoger I don't know how you de los jugadores, las, el proceso selectivo, yo tenía que tener eso también en cuenta. ¿no? Tenía que tener prueba, pruebas también psicológicas so con el psicólogo que realiza, que realiza una evaluación personal. Test. Muy importante so saber cómo está el jugador, dónde viene, su origen, qué quiere uh, del deporte, dónde va a llegar, si quiere ser olímpico, si quiere ser campeón panamericano, top test mundial. Todo aquel que habla con el psicólogo, que me pasa las informaciones y eso es el sentido del proceso. Entonces es muy importante también esta situación. Aquí está el proceso de evaluación, evaluación final. El entrenador elige atletas con datos de los mecanismos de evaluación y también por la margen de evolución del atleta. Se evaluaron 26 atletas y 12 se quedaron en la selección. O sea, yo me puedo equivocar. Yo me puedo equivocar. Pero al momento que tenía los atletas allá, yo creo que ha hecho los 12 que me iba con mejores resultados en todo el proceso de evaluación. Claro que hay también la margen de progresión. Los atletas tienen margen de progresión. Y si puede dar una chance a un jugador que estos días no ha tenido muy buenas muy buena evaluación o que no estaba en un buen momento. Entonces hay cosas que tenemos que contar como entrenadores. Pero me podía equivocar. Pero creo que el ciclo ha sido okay, los, los, los que fueron uh, mistake, el, elegidos, yo creo que fueron los mejores que teníamos I para eso. Ok, aquí tenemos un minuto de break. All right, let's take a one minute break. All right, perfect. And before you go to break, I need you to yeah. disable your screen, stop sharing your screen, and look for ah, the aquí está. Spanish option. Oh, interpret interpretation is here. Yeah, so click on Spanish, please, while we do this transition. Um, please, to our audience, if you were in the English channel, go to the Spanish channel. How about now? Okay, let's check. Thank you, Marco. In the meantime, let's continue now. Let's make a pause to test your knowledge of badminton in Pan America. So we invite you to briefly answer today's trivia. Please write down your answer and comments in the chat box. So today's question is, which country has won the gold medal for badminton in all five categories in the same edition of the Panam Games? We're gonna give you some time to answer. Uh -huh. Muy bien. Very well then. Let's see. 
in which year? In, in which Panam Games? Because many are writing down the country only. Perfect. So let's ask the team to show the answer. And actually, the answer is Canada. The 12th edition of the Panam Games held in Mar de Plata, Argentina in 1995. Very well, then I see that most people answered correctly. Marco, how did you do? Did you get it right? I was thinking about Canada, actually. But the year? I didn't know. I didn't know the year. OK, so you got it 50% right. I was thinking about 50 I was thinking about Canada. I didn't type it, but well, the year, no, I didn't know. Well, most people who were uh, sharing the chat room got it right. Very well then, Marco, please carry on with your talk whenever you're ready. Let's go. Can you please share your screen? And always have your mic close to you, please. All right. No, not yet. We cannot see it. Tienes que activar primero tu PowerPoint. First, you have to open your PowerPoint file and then on the toolbox, click on share screen. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Si no, lo que hacer, si gusta, yo if puedo... not, what we can do, if you want, to can share your presentation because I, he, I have here, I have it here. Yes, please. Just let me know when should I go to the next slide. Yeah, go, go ahead, please. Okay, just give me one second. Let's see if I can share it. Can you see it now? Let's see. Voy a recibir un feedback. A ver Let si me get feedback. I am changing the slides now. Can you see it? Yes, I'm looking at it. Perfect. All right. We are there. So this is the evaluation, the analysis, and the in, in the objective setting or setting up objectives. So after all of the tests that we did and analyzed and realized that we uh, had a lot of work to do and that we needed a very well-structured plan with a lot of discipline and to be very rigorous in every area, we had to set the following objectives. Next, please. So these were the actions that we prioritized. Discipline. I had a lot of tr problems with athletes in terms of discipline. That's very important. So I thought that, I, I think that discipline needs to be number one because we were joking around a lot. So the first action that needed to be prioritized was discipline. Then the quality of work. The quality needed to be even better than the one we had. So I wanted quality training all the time. A multidisciplinary team, a physician, a physiotherapist, a technical coordinator, a physical coach, and a technical assistant, which I never had, but I was, I was always looking for one. The quality, technical, and physical schedule, a changing habits, the meals, and the personal life, because there are certain, certain life sites that are not compatible with training. So you cannot control a person 24 seven, but there's 
specific lifestyle that it's not compatible with high performance. So we had to change that. It was important to change habits, their meals, and their life, the personal life. And um, a period of liability or responsibility, actually. Each athlete signed a commitment with the confederation because there was a certain a list of uh, regulations and rules because there were players who did not have experience in high performance training. So we're talking about discipline, uh, quality of work, uh, technical schedule, physical schedule, uh, change in their personal life, in their meals, and obviously responsibility because they need to be accountable uh, for their actions because if not, coaches are always the ones to blame. So we have to make them, hold them accountable for everything they do because that's what will make them achieve their goals and obje objectives, in my opinion, of course. Next. Let's continue with the actions that we prioritized. The training control, how many hours they train, and all the activities of the athletes. Also, a monthly technical evaluation. We had this uh, evaluation every month uh, per athlete and how many hours they trained. And in these training hours, we had the technical part, the physical part, the psychological part, the technical part, and we controlled all of this because I needed it needed a good quality as fast as possible because we had Olympic Games and we had Pan Am, Pan Am Games in 2015. So what was important was to have these changes quickly. So this control had to be very professional. So we had this monthly technical evaluation. I uh, divided the group in training sessions, singles, doubles, and singles. Why singles twice? Because I went to the court from seven to nine with two players in order to change something that I could not change whenever we had group sessions. So we divided these training sessions because I thought that this was very profitable for the success of the team uh, in uh, championships. Also, we increased the training hours because they were used to training two or three hours per day. So I needed more hours because in the beginning, quality was not that good. I wanted to, to have at least one quality hour in the beginning from the six hours. So I wanted, so I increased the hours in order to have quality in the beginning of, of the process. I think now the quality is a lot better. So I can just do two or two hours and a half tomorrow. Uh, in the morning, sorry, and two or two, the, two hours and a half in the afternoon, depending on the objectives uh, that we have, if it's transitioning or shock training, depending on the micro cycle that we are in. Next, please. Let's continue with the actions that we prioritized. The anthropometric uh, metric evaluation, uh, because this is really important. When a player is motivated and he wants to go far, we have to give him data so he can actually feel motivated that he's improving, that he's changing. Also, for the ones who are not improving, we needed to show them that, that the truth, that in the group we had some people who were actually improving very well, but others who weren't. But the, this process is also has to do with genetics. Some evolve their muscles later on, others faster. It depends, but we always had information to show the players. The physical evaluation, cardiovascular information. Every two months, we talked with them in order to see the changes, the evolution. That was really important. And also to make athletes accountable, hold them accountable for their attitudes and objectives. So we showed them all of these. We showed them that this path, what the journey was good or bad. And this could also depend on the coach or not. So this was a team and we were all together. So we also we always had talks amongst ourselves in order to change. Coach, monthly coach evaluation. Our evaluation is really important. We need to have someone who can actually evaluate the coach because if not, he'll just get stuck. Is that a Spanish word? You mean estanca, he gets stuck. Yes, so he also needs something so he can be motivated in order to change. What I'm saying is that this process also needs, 
needs to have a coach evaluation. That's really important because you improve. Yeah, and as well, uh, the results, the results from international uh, events and to evaluate how they play, their attitude, their behavior, their life. So all the information that I can get. The truth is that all of this was just a baseline, but starting the beginning of the change towards high performance. And I actually, I mean, had a lot of hair falling off my head because of this, but I got really good results. I worked a lot of hours because I love what I do. I am really passionate about this. And there's, it's not the same as 40, it's, just, it's, just, it's the, not the same as 46 years ago. Yeah, it's really important to have all of these templates and so on and so forth. But what's the best is to work on the court to keep control of everything and show the players that they what they need to do in order to reach the top so this is a basic process too and these prioritized actions were a change that was really important next here this is a training schedule in blue, you can see the trainings, the, the individual training that I had in court in the morning. So I need to be with my players and talk a lot about the strokes and the food, footwork, the tactical aspect, the, the anticipation, the accuracy, and precision. I would talk with them about everything. So this was a time when, where I, when I could make changes that I thought were really important. Uh, so from seven to nine in the morning, I always had one or two players depending if it was singles or doubles, but no more than two. I always had two tops. So in the morning, I also had the singles group from nine to 11, uh, but and every other day. Uh, so the other days I would have the doubles. So I ha could be fair with both singles and doubles. So. Uh, from 9 to 11, I would have the uh, singles players. From 11 to 1, I would have the doubles players. And then from 3 to 5, the singles players would come back. And from 5 to 7 in the evening, the doubles players would come uh, back. From 9 to 10, we would um, watch and analyze the videos and talk with them. But from 9 to 10 p.m. was not really physical work, but more of a analysis work. And we did this when we were more in the competitive season. So we didn't do this when we were we would do shock training because we would be uh, bothering the uh, players. I haven't included that in here in this, in this slide, but I just wanted to show you how many hours we would be working. Next, please. This is um, a template for special information. We would have here the name of the athlete, the, the age, uh, weight, category, experiences, what experience he had, for example, I don't know, World Championship, the Panam Games, um, South American Games, or some openings, Micro Republic, I don't know. So the experiences that he had, medals, also, is uh, physical information, technical information, tactical information, psychological information, lifestyle, what he did, what I saw, if he was okay or not. The psych part of psychology, we have to understand that I am not a psychologist. I'm just a coach, but of course we need to know a little bit about everything, but this is the feedback that I got from the psychologist. So we cannot work on every area we need to have a professional of each area but it's always good to know a little bit about everything also the profile if this is a player that has many conflicts how he thinks how he gets in the coliseum how he leaves i mean his performance in training but also out of it but this is all the information he's body athlete's body expression gives me a lot of information so through this 
I've always had a final result that I could discuss with them and we usually agree on 90% of the things. And also any characteristics of this player, for example, if he was left-handed, if he was uh, right-handed, if he was uh, slow or fast, the changes he's made, what type of uh, shots he likes to do, uh, where he makes most, the most mistakes. So this is a weekly template. Dear friends, I work a lot and all coaches work a lot, of course, but I would sleep four hours per day when I was in charge of the Brazilian team. I wanted, I did not want something to do very fast, but I wanted to do it very professionally. I wanted to do it very professionally. I didn't want to be a perfectionist, but I wanted to give a lot of information. So this change would come as fast as possible, but not so fast that the, the work would simply crumble down. Because if you uh, go high fast, you also fall fast. So I wanted to do everything in its right time, but many times it would not sleep because I had the feeling that something was missing for the very next day. So in two years, two or three years, I used to sleep very little, but I felt really uh, good with what I did. Next, please. This is a template. Uh, that well, this is one of the last ones that I have. This is the work that I'm doing. This now I already have quality training, and I am I have control over the players and the shot areas and the. I mean, all the process has improved here. So this is a template that is a little bit more complex. But if you do this, it has to be done daily in every session for a month. Here you do a little bit of everything. We have to teach everything to players. Sometimes coaches have to explain a rally in order to make, to, to win, in order to win. So players are already ready. So here you have to work on everything from the beginning. So I had, for example, consistency, consistency training, tactical training, pressure training, games or matches. Um, technical training, uh, accuracy training, precision training, uh, game analysis training, resting, uh, end training, anticipation, and physical training. And down there you can see the explanation of each one of these. For example, consistency, consistency training would see the development of the technique, how, how they uh, did in terms of technique. Uh, tactical training was uh, how they how players um, use the psychological part using athletes uh, in, in the tournaments or uh, different options. Also, pressure training, how they did in, re in real games with others in some different con under certain conditions. Uh, also, uh, game analysis training. I mean, all of this information is to give it to players. So in case there's something you can question, you have all uh, the information. So we want them to know what we're doing with them every day in every session. And all of them have a specific work to do for each one of them. When you work with a group, it's really difficult, of course. So this is a template that it's individual so each one each one of them need what they had to work on so for example okay today i'm going to do this type of, te of technique i'm going to work on this tactic so it depends on the evolution of the athlete and on whatever he needs in order i mean for him to reach his goals and once again this depends on the cycle because we have micro cycles all right next please so I think this is the last slide. It's very important to me. Here, this is the whole story of Marco and the Brazilian team from 2013 to 2016. This is all the information that I have at hand. It's not in the computer. Everything is at hand. So as you can see, you have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, books, notebooks. 
You say it, notebooks. That's how you say it, notebooks? Yes. Yeah, uh, with notes, personal notes and personal information from each one of the athletes, what they ate, what they said, what they didn't, their body expression, their training, if they fought with their friends or not, how I solved the conflict, uh, what they liked eating, what they ate before competing, if they felt sick, okay, so I would check, okay, what did you eat that day, uh, if they were always on time, all the information that you can imagine, it's in here. It's a lot of information. I would write a lot, a lot. So this is very personal information. Uh, later on, I hope to write a book actually, not about my story, but my life in badminton. And there's a lot of crucial information here. And there's very important information here uh, for my development as a coach. Here, you can also see that there's a shuttle and this, includes my mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. So I have to write down my mistakes so I can remember what I did as a coach because I have also made a lot of uh, mistakes and I have to be constantly changing. I'm not perfect. So I also had to write down about me because I told them, hey, I'm writing about me because I'm changing as well. This is constructive uh, criticism, but there are many stories here about championships, for example, when they uh, went out with girls, when they um, skipped to the hotel. So this is the story of the change of the Brazilian, uh, of Brazilian badminton. And that's it, my dear friends. Now we are going through a different process of uh, development in Brazilian badminton. We're in a different phase now. Uh, it's not at the development level, it's more about high performance here. Uh, templates are a lot more complex. So this was just the basis that we did in three years, 2013, no, actually four years, from 2013 to 2016. And we still want to uh, improve and develop and progress in order, and we want to share this with everyone. Perfect, thank you very much, Marco. Actually, this is an experience that helps us a lot in the sense that it makes us realize about the work that you did and how you ended up with those results. So now I just want to uh, close your presentation so we can continue. Give me a second. All right. Well, now, well, thank you, Marco, for sharing your life experience. And now we are moving on to the questions and answer sections. Please, if you have any question, comment, or experience you'd like to share, write them down in the chat box. So I'll, I've noticed that I've had they have uh, many interesting questions. Among them, when you talk about intrinsic motivation. Someone asked how or what methodology did you use in order to work on this with the athletes? Here in Brazil, the situation of certain players, as everyone knows, uh, came from social projects. They were looking for something in their life. 90% of athletes in the team come from social projects. These are athletes that are looking in sport are looking for a life in sports. So that's something that, that comes within them. So we have to develop that. So what I developed in others was just by looking examples um, they could look up to. For example, other coaches, other players. Uh, so they could feel that, that was the, the path to take. But intrinsic m motivation is already there in players. But some of them already have it, but we, we need to develop that. So we need to, to look for any different way of development and not just leave a player because, I mean, I don't have a perfect formula. I don't. But first, we need to write a lot about the players I did so I can feel like I can help develop that intrinsic motivation in them. If you don't write that down, if you think you know everything, then that's a mistake. So I had to write 
about every step that this player took so I could actually help him um, be motivated in every area. For example, I had a player who was very young, but he had a, a, a child, so that's what I could develop in his motivation. Hey, you have a, a son, so let's show your son who you are. You want to change, right? You are going to make a change in your life for your son, so your son is not going to be uh, like you. So that's something that you can change. So let's develop that, that thing you have within you. So we are going to go to the court as a lion. So each one of them had their own profile and it's necessary to study their profiles in order to develop them. Perfect, Marco. And that's something that I've always not discussed, but stated. We coaches are educators. It's not just about taking them to the next uh, match or to a certain level, but we are developing people for the future. There's another interesting question here. Can you mention, can you talk about your team, the one you worked with? Because you mentioned that you had a physiologist, a physical trainer, physical, physical coach, and psychologist. Can you talk about that a little bit? Who were with you? When I arrived in Brazil in 2013, we already had a multidisciplinary team, which was really good. I had a physical trainer, a physical coach who I had already been working with badminton in Brazil, called IDE. And then they also had two physiotherapists who did the players' rehab whenever they were injured. So I already had what I needed in every area. I had two psychologists who worked on the psychological side of players. I also had a technical coordinator who was really good. I mean, he was the, from the top, from the top level, Dr. Juan Quirinazo. He has helped me a lot. He has taught me a lot in terms of discipline and being rigorous. So he had all the, I had the com, all the components to do a very good job. So we would have monthly meetings in order to discuss about every area and all the mistakes that all of us made and what we had to change and if there any disciplinary issue with the players. So we had a team that were in charge of their areas, but each well, we would all depend on each other and we worked as a team like that. Perfect, so let's see. When you say, when you talk about discipline and uh, quality training, we already know that Latin people are very hard working but we have to be a little bit a little bit more organized so what problems do you have that you can uh, tell us about in terms of discipline and the quality of the um, guys that you were in charge of i had a lot of problems i would say that i would say that the first year was the worst because they were not used to training so many hours they were not used to um rules but regular rules like you having any team of any country discipline and being rigorous. I think that there's a line. And on one side of the line, you have the players who are part of a team, and on the other side, you have your coach. You cannot cross that line. If I cross that line, I have to leave. If the player crosses that line, then the player has to leave. I mean, I've had a lot of problems. I would send a player every week to their house. And when I did that, it, it was not for just for, for 10 days, but just for one day because I didn't want him to stop training for 10 days. But I fought a lot with their parents, with coaches, with players, with everyone, but I had to make that change. At the end of the day, they said that I was like a general. But in order to make this change, I had to be a general. But a polite one with determination and with uh, goals and objectives. And of course, when you are used to all of that, then yeah, you you fight a lot. I had a lot of fights. I, I argued a lot. I mean, let me, let me tell you a story. I was in train uh, training, in a training session, and I was I had these players who were always uh, joking around. So and they were right-handed. So I told them to train for two hours with their left hand. After that, they remained silent. They wouldn't joke around anymore. So that was, so I disciplined them. So when you have objectives, you need to have discipline. 
Perfect, Marco. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to summarize three or four questions so you can answer very briefly because we don't, we're short in time. What's the optimal age that you think you can incorporate uh, kids in this uh, process, in, in this transitioning process? Actually, I had an experience with a girl who was really young when she came in and she was 14 years old at that time. So my experience made me make mistakes. And in that book, I'll write about my mistakes. I think that for a player to go to the senior team, there's no fixed age, but it depends on each person's maturity as well, how mature you are. For example, today I have a girl who's 14 years old, but she is a lot more mature in comparison to the other girl that I mentioned. So when players arrive, I mean, I don't specify this according to their age because I want to develop players as young as possible, but within it, parameters of quality. But this is not, this should not be the same as adults. For example, it's the load of work would not, will not be the same for a 14 year old uh, to a 20 year old or 25 year old. But we have to develop all of these parameters. But I really like it when they come, uh, when they're 18 or 19 years old. Yes, because they're already psychologically mature, right. One of the most difficult processes that we have, that all coaches have gone through is to separate a player from a team. And you were talking about that during your presentation, that you had to do that for different reasons, right? And that, that part was difficult. So the question is, what reasons you had to do that and how that process went? We talked about everything here. The process is the changing technique, in footwork, in attitude, in motivation, in body expression, when they arrive to training, in attitude towards the coach. I mean, all of, you analyze all of this, and then I remove these from the team, and then they start working on their own, so he can actually mature or grow. So we have to show them different paths. I'm going to try different paths in order to get it to the same place where I want to get. So I'm going to make players to reach their goal, but in rigor, rigorous and discipline. Marco, which indicators would you say are the most important in order to choose a, a player for this process? The physical characteristics, the mental characteristics, of course, all the technical part is really important. I players who are really good technically speaking or, or if they play really passive badminton but i think that their lifestyle to me i think that it's something that's fundamental lifestyle is fundamental there are coaches who say oh but wait uh, uh, i i they the player has a drink with me what with me as a coach no there's no way because when i a play at a high performance level i never had one single drink but after 30 years oh well, now i can't have a drink with my coach but high performance is like a jungle and you have to learn how to survive so all of these mechanisms need to be coordinated and to have a sense of duty so for me this is very important a friend from el salvador coach rene asks you who you know he asks in your personal opinion, which was the most difficult time you experienced in the process, the most uncomfortable time that you had to live in that process with your players? The most difficult process that I went through was a fight that I had with a coach. And I uh, received a lot of threats, very strong threats. And it was a very difficult process to digest. It was a not, it was not a very easy process because I was not in my country, it was a different reality. So this is a conflict of interest that, um, I mean, I wanted the best athletes in our team. Uh, so the process was very difficult, but I was very determined. I wanted the right people with me and I, want to fight for good things not for bad things and i knew i was doing what 
well, I was doing good things. I knew that I was doing what was best for the for badminton in Brazil, and so I really liked it. It's just in Latin America, the mindset of certain players and coaches, uh, with whom I was related. Well, it was very difficult. So it's something that we needed to develop very quickly because we have players who are really good, who can get to top 10 in the world, who can get to the top 10, the world ranking. So there's a lot of possibilities in Latin America, but because of the psychological aspect, we haven't been able to reach that. But I suffered a lot as a coach with that. Right. However, that's something that we need to learn and develop it throughout Latin America. Marco, well, we ran out of time. I wasn't able to ask you other questions, but well, that will be in another opportunity. However, you can still write them down in the chat box and later on we will try to answer them when we upload this uh, video in YouTube. Well, Marco, any last messages you'd like to share before we finish your participation in our program? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, colleagues, friends in this work because we're all working for the development of America. Thank you for this session, for being with me here so I could share a little bit about the work I did in Brazil. And I just wanted to uh, greet all families, all the people of all the countries who are watching. And also, I would like to mention the physicians, doctors, uh, nurses, police officers who are trying to help us with COVID-19. They're doing a great job uh, for all of us for our benefit. So that's something I wanted to mention from all of us to them. And I hope that everyone is very far away from COVID and I send a huge hug to all of you. Thank you very much, Marco. Uh, thank you very much for sharing such interesting information. And as always, we always uh, had a great time when we meet and when we discuss uh, uh, topics about uh, badminton in current times. And to our audience, please help us improve the quality, the content quality of the course and its delivery by anonymously answering the poll you'll see on your screen. To our badminton family, we invite you to the next session entitled Feedback, uh, Self-Control Feedback in Junior Badminton Players. So this talk will be transmitted next uh, Friday, June 12th, where we will have the pleasure to have Coach Sabra Afif from Poland. We ask, invite you to write to us and propose any topics that you might be interested in. Write, it them, write them now in the chat box located on the right side of, of your screen. We also want to invite you to check out the YouTube channel of Badminton Panam, where you will be able to watch this and other conferences that we have had in these months. On behalf of Badminton Panam, we thank you for your participation and we hope that this session, that you like this session. Greetings. Take care.